Uh, next speaker is Alvaro Sea from Imperial College London. And uh, again, it will be some FSI uh, simulation. And we are very curious about your, your talk. Uh, the floor is yours, Alvaro. Okay, thank you. Hello, everyone. Um, yeah, my name is Alvaro Sea. I work with Professor Rafael Palacios, who you probably know. And actually, I've been working with SC2 only for a couple for the last couple of months. So here, the credit goes to Nikos, who is the one that have developed the Flutter capability within SC2, and that I'm going to present you today. So some motivation. So the goal of this work is to investigate robust computational methods for accurate and efficient prediction of elastic instabilities, mainly wings and aircraft operating in the transonic regime. Um, and to move from the potential flow and steady aerodynamics, which has been historic, historically the way to model these, these problems into a higher fidelity framework, which may be critical also for high speed ratio morphing designs. Um, some background and methodology. Uh, Flutter is a linear dynamic instability of the couple system. So a flexible airframe and the surrounding fluid. And it is defined by neutrally stable oscillations of the wind. In terms of modeling the structure, it is very convenient to use the natural modes for simplification. And we can use the harmonic balance to directly find this flatter point, which is very convenient because it's, it's highly numerical efficient. And the flutter sensitivities also can be obtained for parametric designs, although it does not lead to a traditional industrial elastic methodology, let's say. So alternative, we have also developed uh, gener generalized aerodynamic forces matrices, liber leveraging the harmonic balance method, from which a standard elastic methods can be used. And moreover, we show here that we can build an elastic state space system, which are suitable for control design and flutter suppression. So the harmonic balance method uh, is, a, is a very well established technique. I'm not gonna I'm not gonna talk much about it, but just to say that it allows us to convert a uh, an steady problem into a steady problem by expanding the fluid and structural variables into harmonics. On the computational structural dynamic side, we have implemented this harmonic balance method, as I said, from the model solution. Um, and maybe impor it's importantly to say that uh, we can compute the modes from the native eigenvalue solver that we have built within SE2 or we can also provide an input from an external FEA solver, such as Nastran, and then RBF interpolation, which has come up, come up a few times already, to map the modes onto the aerodynamic grids. So tra traditionally, the harmonic balance approach has been used to predict LCOs, so limit cycles oscillation, which is a, a nonlinear uh, fluid structural eff effect. And, and so here we can see a, a bifurcation diagram on this, on this, um, on, a, on a typical behavior of a, of a wind. Now we want to use it for a direct calculation of the flutter stability. So we start from an initial guess and update the frequency and the velocity. We need to simultaneously converge the flow solution, the structural deformation, the flutter velocity, and the frequency of the harmonic elastic response. And for that, we need to impose additional constraints on the phase of the harmonics and also on the amplitude to fix a unique solution of the flutter point. So as you can see, we need to drive that red point into the exactly the, the, the flutter point, which is going to happen when we have very small oscillations. 
Now, to impose these constraints, we do it by minimizing a figure of merit based on the structural residual. And a schematic of, of this approach within the SU2 implementation um, can, be see, can be seen here. So we initialize the CFD, the CSD solvers. We perform an RBF interpolation. We get the aerodynamic forces. Mars the structural dynamics one step, then impose the phase and amplitude constraints. And then on one hand, we update the flutter velocity and the inlet conditions, very important. And on the other, other hand, we need to deform the CFD grids, calculate the grid velocities. We take the CFD solutions of the, st the steady CFD solutions of the harmonic balance. So we update the frequency and then we repeat the loop until convergence. Now, maybe more interesting is what we call nonlinear flutter. So it's when the equilibrium of the wind uh, is around a nonlinear equilibrium, basically. So we need to introduce these extra, extra points where we calculate the forces, we calculate the, the, the displacement at the equilibrium. We also need to update the structural modes and the natural frequencies. And from this updating, we repeat the loop. Um, that's why it's called nonlinear flutter. So the methodology is basically the same, but we need to do this updating within the loop. Now, as, as we said before, this is not common in industrial practice. So we have developed more usual methods through generalized aerodynamic forces, also using the harmonic balance solver. So basically computing the pressures for each harmonic projecting into the modes and getting these, these gaps. Now, what we can do with these gaps the, is develop sampling-based methods where we sample these gaps at different reduced frequencies. And now together with the structural description, we get in the frequency domain as uh, an equation like this, which we can solve with different methods. One very popular one is the PK method. And, but this is, is important to say that this, only, this is only accurate, exactly, at the flat, flatter point. So it, it's good for flatter, but there is no much we can do with it. So probably a more elegant solution and more useful is this rational interpolation flatter algorithm. Um, if you don't even look at the right-hand side, these are the, the magic mathematics. But the takeaway is that we can we can basically produce a linear time invariant uh, system. So it's a realization of aerodynamics. And with this state space system, uh, we can also build a state space system of the structural model, then couple it with the transfer function. And so we have a state space elastic system from which we can easily calculate the stability features from the eigenvalues but we can also do control design and therefore flutter suppression. And this is coming, coming now on a paper by Nikos where all these mathematics will be, will be explained. So some numerical results. Here for the validation, a canonical, a canonical, a canonical case, the Agar 445. Um, you can see here the pressure distributions, and so one step is to, to take the model shapes, which in this case come from Nastran, and interpolate this, extract, this structural model into the, into the aerodynamics from, for which we use the RBF. And it works very nicely, as you can see, on the frequency and flutter results here, comparing against experiments and against literature. Now, a different approach is, is used here for this flexible swept wind, which has been built with a, the structural model within the SU2 native solver. And, and a model solver has been included using the spectra library. And so we can get the modes, we can get the reference solution. And now we compare here all the Flutter method, the three strategies to calculate flutter. So we can see here on the 
top left mm -hmm. figure an eigenvalue evolution with the free stream velocity using the PK method, tracking the first three modes, first bending, second bending, first torsion, those that drive the flatter. On the right hand side is the root locus from the PK and also from the rational interpolation method. They are not exactly the same, although the flatter is very similar, but they are not the same because of the way they are constructed. And well, on the comparison for the flatter, they are very close at around 57 hertz for the frequency and around 370 meters per second. And finally, uh, this is some work I've been doing more on the application side of SE2 in collaboration with Marco Fossati, which is in the audience, uh, and also the guys at IRT, the French Institute. So here we had taken a big data big database of CFD simulations from which we construct ROMs that provide sectional polars to a medium fidelity elastic toolbox box from which we get modal shapes, among other things, around the nonlinear equilibrium. And we repeat this loop in a preliminary design process. And now from the resulting design, we what we are working on now is on taking the resulting design into a detailed design phase using only the SE2 suite to flatter all the flatter developments and, and looking to see the performance there. So a summary of the development on, on, on this side of SE2 includes the in, so SE2 includes the implementation of the harmonic balance method for the impose rigid mesh motion, but we have included the surface mesh deformation uh, for 3D grids. We have seen that is quite insensitive to initial conditions, so it's quite robust. We validated against 2D and 3D cases, is numerically efficient, and also very importantly, the flatter sensitivities can be directly obtained to construct a multidisciplinary design process. Now we have also been looking at the modifications to account for structural geometrical linearities, which need to update the model shapes, the frequencies, so that needs to be within the, the SU2 structural solver. And this was found that it was very important to take into account the volumetric mesh deformation at each HV instance when calculating the source terms. And we have put two possibilities for the grid velocities through the HV operator or through the boundary displacements using the mesh deformation solver. We also build extraction, the extraction of the gaps for the different methods for flutter. And we are currently applying all these into the design of the strat brace wing. And yeah, that's the end of, of the presentation. Any questions? Thank you, Alvaro. Thank you. If there are any questions from the, the audience uh, or online? I'll repeat the question. So, um, I've got two questions. Alvaro, I'll uh, repeat the question from Matteo Pini from Theo Delft. Um, yes, yes, please, because I couldn't hear anything. <laughs> I mentioned that. The, um, the first question is, uh, is this a, develop, a further development of the harmonic balance implementation that is already available in SU2? It was devised by 
that uh, Stanford. And the second yeah. question is, uh, is this development available already uh, in, in, uh, in the repository? Okay, so to the first question, yeah, this is a further, further development. So as far as I, as I understood, uh, initially only 2D for the flutter calculation could be, could be used. Uh, and yeah, there, 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 were, there were a lot of development in terms of the mesh, the, the, the deformation of the mesh, the, all the structural dynamics converting this into the harmonic balance of the structural dynamics on the um, building the, the model solution for the native structural solver. Um, basically, one of the novelties on the work is if, if you see the literature is that uh, most of these applications to the harmonic balance for the calculation of flutter is used on simple to the to the air files, whereas here you, you have it as to, to apply to any kind of aircraft within the SU2 suite. And it, it took it to, I know it took a lot of work for, for Nikos to to have it. Now for the second question, what I've been doing in the past weeks is because Nikos didn't have it, didn't have this on on on, on, on the branch, he, he just took it on, on SU2. So I've been creating a feature branch Emerging all his developing developments into a feature branch that hopefully at some point gets gets pulled into 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 develop, but is 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 not there yet. Okay, so in, in my understanding, uh, uh, the work uh, you did uh, is to add to the existing harmonic balance, uh, uh, say the, the mesh deformation uh, RBF interpolation. And the modal representation of a of the structure. Yeah, that is true. Okay. Um, okay. Now it's it's. Uh, we, we as, understand. as you can see, we I mean, Nikos needed to include source terms, uh, you know, with, within all the harmonic balance solution as as I point here for the volumetric mesh deformations in the three D case and. Yeah, there's been a quite a few things. I, I because I wouldn't know what is the state of the code before this, so I wouldn't know how to say exactly how is this different from from what was already in SU2. But I know there's been plenty of work. Yes. Okay. Thank you. Any other you. question? Uh, well, in fact, I, I just have a quick one uh, concerning the inlet condition that you said were uh, are critical in the in the workflow, yeah. and I'm you made me curious. So the thing is that you you have a flutter, okay, you, you at the end flutter is you need to calculate the, the free stream velocity at which flutter occurs. Sure. So once every time you, you update the flutter, you need to update all the in the conditions. Okay, right. It, okay. Yeah, it's, it's, yeah. Yes, yes. You're of, of course you're looking for a different velocity, so you, you change the inlet. Okay, sorry, I didn't get that. Yeah, it's, I mean it, all this loop is is a very interesting one, right? Because this. At the end, it's, it's solving a, a steady problem using only steady, only steady computations. But it's, it's quite efficient because for Flutter, you don't need you only need one harmonic, right? It's not like LCOs, which is a nonlinear problem, and you need quite a few to capture the, that nonlinear behavior. For the Flutter, you only need one harmonic, which is the harmonic at, at which Flutter occurs at the end. Yeah. Okay. I think we are. Uh, okay. We we can thank you again, Alvaro. Thank you for this very nice contribution.